Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Amanda. If you haven't been here before, if you have, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to modernize this pattern. I found this pattern over on Pinterest and I was like, oh my goodness, I have to recreate this. But obviously I wanted to add more modern details to it, like the really low neckline in the front and the open back. So I decided to play my hand at adjusting this. I did also add boxed, uh, like a box kind of sleeve. There are no shoulder pads in here. This straight sleeve situation, shoulder sleeve, is from a um, box pleat that I added on the top of the sleeve head, which I showed you guys in the video. Thank you guys so much for being patient. This video is super late. If you guys um, follow me on social media, you know that I made this same suit set in brown. And then I edited the footage, did my voiceover, did my graphics and everything. And as I was exporting, all of the footage was deleted. So I had to spend the next uh, the next two days after that refilming and this is what you see here. I'm actually so glad that I decided to refilm it because this one came out so, so, so much better. So I'm really excited about this. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also turn on notifications so you guys can be notified every time I post a new video. If you guys are interested in learning how I drafted this sewing pattern from scratch, as well as all of my other sewing patterns that I have on the channel and get one exclusive members only content a month, this month is the ball gown. Um, please hit the join button down below to support the channel. I appreciate you guys. Now let's get to it. Okay, so this is this dress. Take two, y'all. I will insert a few clips in here um, of the first version of this dress, which I made out a a brown suiting but um, I lost all the footage. So I had to entirely remake the stress, which could be, you know, a sign that maybe I needed to make it better or I don't know. But um, I decided to go ahead and remake it in a gray suiting that I had. And I actually like the way this one turned out a lot better. So I'm gonna start with all of my pattern pieces. I created this pattern over on my members only section. I will put a card above here uh, so you guys can go ahead and check out that video if you are a member on the channel. Or if you're not a member, you can become a member and then check out the video. <laughs> anyway, so I have all of my pieces cut out here. Like I said, I cut it out of a gray suiting. And I also have my flat pieces cut from a blue lining fabric. It's like an anti-static lining. It's just one of those really cheap linings that I had laying around from some projects that I could all right, so we have all of our pieces here. I'm going to start by assembling our bodice. I have our bodice sleeve cut here. I've got our bodice front and then our two back pieces. So I'm going to start by marking my darts. You wanna make sure that you transfer over all your darts and your tucks and uh, your notches from your sleeve over to your pattern um, so that we can line everything up appropriately. I'm gonna start with my bodice front piece and I'm going to pin all of the darts and the tucks for this piece. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. This is what it looks like all pinned and I'm going to sew all of these. Remember for your tucks, you just sew and then you stop at where your dot is. You don't want to sew down um, like a full dart because then that just, it's a different effect. I'm also sewing my pleat in the back and then my dart. I, I wonder if this is considered a pleat. It's not a dart. Well, it used to be a dart and then I took the top off. So I think now it's like a pleat. I don't know. I'm sewing that. I mean, I'm pinning that. And then I'm also going to take that over to the sewing machine and sew. But for now, I'm going to add it to my pile. And I'm also going to start pinning my sleeve. I want to make sure that I have opposite sleeves, like because there, are, there is like a front and a back to the sleeve. And I want to make sure that I have opposite um, ends. And I am just now noticing that I have like a huge chunk off the top of my sleeve. I didn't notice that until I started setting in the sleeve, y'all. Ridiculous. I'm placing my sleeve right sides together and I'm going to clip that down as well. Okay. 
Okay, and I need to sew these with a half an inch seam allowance down the underarm seam, but you guys were so bad sewing, so I have a couple more things to pin before we go over to the sewing machine. So let's put these to the side. I have my front facing pieces here and I am going to uh, take apart, obviously take off the pattern paper, and then I'm going to pin down the center front as well as the shoulder seams of my uh, facing pieces so that we can get it all prepped and ready to go for when it's time to actually face our bodice. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to speak about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community and they specialize in learning content for creative people like you and I. They have so many classes on there from photography, videography, illustration, and softwares. I have been using Adobe Illustrator for the longest um even before I started fashion design and I get a lot of questions on how I learned how to use um, Adobe Illustrator. Skillshare has quite a few classes on Adobe Illustrator. I'm here on the home screen of Skillshare.com and I wanted to see uh, what kind of class I would be interested in learning next and I see this class. Whoa! Adobe Illustrator, right? So this class is called Adobe Illustrator CC Essentials Training, and this will really help you guys um, learn the basics of Adobe Illustrator. It may not teach you, well, it doesn't teach you pattern drafting, but what it does teach you is how to use all of the tools. And once you know how to use all of the tools, pattern drafting comes second nature okay so i really do highly rec recommend this class this will be my next big class that i am watching uh to brush up not brush up but to expand my skills on skillshare skillshare is offering a free trial of premium membership for my subscribers so check the link in the description box and once your free trial is over you can always join skillshare for less than ten dollars a month thank you so much for skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it Okay, so I'm just placing my uh, pocket flap lining onto my pocket flap right sides together and I'm clipping all the way around and we're going to sew this with a half an inch seam allowance. Almost there, almost there, we got a couple more things. The next thing I'm gonna do is work on our pocket bag itself. You could cut the pocket bag lining out of, uh, the pocket bag facing, I'm sorry, out of um, lining instead of the gray wool, but in my red version, I noticed that the lining kind of peeked through. So this time I decided to cut them both out of the suiting. Did I say wool? I meant suiting. Goodness gracious. Aspirations though, right? Okay, so uh, now I am putting my uh, pocket bag right sides together to my pocket bag facing and I'm going to clip all the way around. I am leaving a half an inch uh, at the start and then a half an inch at the end because this is gonna be how we're placing our facing right sides together with the actual skirt. So you wanna leave uh, those portions open. Just like I'm showing here. So start and then you stop. Now I'm gonna take everything over to the sewing machine and sew all of those things that we just pinned. So you wanna make sure that all the seams are being sewn with the half an inch seam allowance and then you just sew your darts and your tucks following the lines that you marked from your pattern.
I have my skirt front piece here. We're going to start by um, uh, putting in, we're gonna start by putting together our pocket and our pocket bag and our flap, okay? So I'm placing it right sides up and I am going to get my pocket flap and I'm going to, first of all, trim off this extra, um, I'm gonna trim off my extra lining using some pinkish shears because this fabric does fray. This would have been nice with some piping. I kept saying that for the last one and then I still didn't get out, go out and get any cording to make piping. So this would be really nice if you piped this pocket flap. I'm aligning my notch and I am going to clip all um, on both sides of that. And then you could base this first if you wanted to, but I like to limit the amount of trips that I take to my sewing machine. So I'm going to continue to assemble the pocket. I have my pocket bag and facing uh, here. I'm laying it right side up so that I can mentally figure out how this is going to go together. Then I'm uh, reaching into my pocket and I'm turning out the facing where we left that half an inch opening. I'm going to align my notch with my skirt front and I'm just going to clip as we did for the pocket flap. I'm also going to take this time to pin my center front here. Do you guys see how quick this is coming together? This is literally like, uh, if I wasn't filming it, it put, I could probably make this in like four to five hours, like a really quick dress to make. And it'll be perfect for like business meetings and stuff like that. So I'm going to sew down my center front seam here and I'm going to put this to the side because I'm also going to prep my back piece. We're going to clip the, uh, the center back. And I'm also going to leave a nine and a half to 10 inch uh, opening at the top so that we can obviously insert our zipper. All right, now I'm over at the machine sewing everything that we just pinned. After you sew all these seams, you do wanna make sure that you're going over to your ironing table and pressing all your seams so everything is nice and flat and clean. Now I am going to work on our bodice. I'm placing right sides together, my back to my front, and I'm going to pin the side seams as well as the shoulder seams. And all of this is getting sewn with a half an inch seam allowance. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the front. I'm kind of scrunching it up so we can get the whole skirt here on the table. I have my front right side up and I'm putting my skirt back right side down and I'm going to pin down the side seams. Notice that I did serge all of my seams so that my side seams are finished independently just in case I have to make any adjustments. And off camera, I sewed those together uh, with a half an inch seam allowance. Now that I have all of these assembled, I did go ahead and press my side seams and my shoulder seams open, as well as my side seams of the skirt. I pressed those open too, so everything is nice and clean on the inside. If you guys are opposed to using contrasting serging thread, you could go ahead and thread your serger with like a, a matching color if you wanted to, but like this is for me. 
And even if it was for a client, I think white surgeon thread is pretty neat. So now I have my bodice here and I'm going to go ahead and set in my sleeve. So I'm setting it in uh, from notch to notch. So I'm setting that portion in smooth. And then when I get towards the top, I'm going to find the midpoint of the top, right? You see here, I'm finding the midpoint and then I'm matching that up with my shoulder line. And then I'm just going to place a, um, a knife pleat on either side. Uh, they're going the opposite ways so that the two pleats even um, actually make up a box pleat here at the tippy top of my shoulder. And I'm just going to clip those in place. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. I'm also going to go ahead and pin my uh, waistline seam while I'm at it. This is like one of the last seams we have to sew, you guys, we're almost done. I'm uh, pinning my waistline seam, matching my center front first, and then I'm just going to pin in either direction. This is gonna be sewn with a half an inch seam allowance. All right, so here we are sewing our waistline here. You wanna make sure that when you're going over your seams and your darts, everything is nice and flat and they are laying in the direction that they're supposed to. Snip all your threads and then I'm sewing my sleeves in now. I'm setting my sleeves in. I'm doing this at a half an inch seam allowance. Both the waistline and the armholes are going to be surged and pressed. I also did clip into my armhole. Um, I clipped into it quite a bit to ease some of that tension. And this is what that box pleat looks like on the top. I absolutely love it, you guys. It gives the look of shoulder pads, but without the shoulder paddy kind of you know, firmness, right? So this is... Um, one of the finishing steps, our last thing to really do here uh, before we put in the zipper and do the hem is our facing. So I'm placing my facing right sides together uh, with my bodice here. I'm starting at my center front and then I'm just going to clip around matching all of my seam lines, matching my corners and the top of the center back and I'm just going to clip all the way around and we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew this with a half an inch seam allowance. All right, so here we are at the sewing machine and I am starting and back stitching. When I get to my corner, I'm leaving my needle down and pivoting around. We have lots of corners on this one, so do not be lazy, you guys. You want those clean, sharp edges. You have to leave your needle down and pivot. Same thing when you get to the center front and all the way around back to the other side. Really quick, I'm going to take this over to my ironing table and uh, press a muslin, not muslin, press a uh, square of interfacing here right at my neckline so that when I snip up into this to relieve that tension at the V, it is nice and clean there and it doesn't really fray. I'm also using my pinking shears to trim down all of the rest of the seam allowance. Don't trim down a whole bunch because we still need a little bit of seam allowance to be able to understitch our facing downwards. Thank you. 
now I'm under all right so I am now under stitching and you just want to under stitch as far as you can go I have my stitch length set to uh, 3.5 millimeters you could do it at a four it's up to you and I am just under stitching like I said as far as I can go when I get to the part where it turns out for where the button needs to be obviously I can't stitch all up in there and then at the V of the front you want to break your thread and then start on the other side of the V you don't want to try to sew the whole V because then it's not gonna sit right so I'm going to continue to under stitch and then you can take it over to the ironing table and give it all a good press but you guys know I don't like to move from place to place to place to place. So I'm going to also um, insert my zipper while I'm here. Uh, and I like to insert my zipper by first closing the center back seam. And then I just baste my zipper in, open the seam, and then um, sew my zipper in permanently. I'm gonna finish off the top of my zipper here by turning my facing. Um, it's gonna be right sides together to the right side of the seam allowance here. And then I'm just going to sew that down to the zipper tape so that it's nice and clean. It's very similar to the way you would do the, to do um, a lining the same way. And then you could also clip this corner here um, so that it's all nice and clean. Now we're on to our final step. We're doing our hem. The first thing I'm going to do is surge the entire bottom of my hem, making sure that my seams are laying how they're supposed to lay. If I had more time, I would have let this, uh, hang for a couple of days so that the bias of the skirt could stretch out and then I would have trimmed it, blah, blah, blah. I don't have time for that. So I am just surging it. And then now I am, um, turning it under about a half an inch and then top stitching it down. I would, I usually tops a uh, stitch from the bottom side, but my bobbin is white and I don't want bobbin. I don't want white on the top and I'm finishing the, the hem of the sleeves the same way. And then you do want to take this over to your sewing machine and give this a really good press the whole entire hem and the cuff or not the cuff, but the hem of the sleeve as well. And then we have a bit of hand sewing to do to finish this off. So I've pressed everything over to the inside and I've used some pins to kind of help hold it in place while it cools. Now I have a pretty long uh, needle that uh, with thread that's been waxed and you wanna make sure that you set your wax with your iron. And I'm going to do a catch stitch and sew down all of the facing. I noticed that when I don't sew the facing down, it kind of flaps out like how you guys see it in my intro. Um, so after that, I went ahead and sewed all the facing down to make sure that nothing is flapping out on me because I can't, I can't be, I can't get caught like that, y'all. <laughs> okay, this is the final look. What do you guys think about this? I actually love, love, love this suit set. 
I can still my I can see myself meeting brides with this on uh, going to business meetings, uh, functions, and, and maybe even classes when I open back up to do classes. So I really do like this look. I think it looks very professional, and I also feel really sexy in it. So that's also a plus too. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. These are all the names of my members. If you guys want to become a member, all you have to do is click the join button down below and you will get access to all of my exclusive members only content. Like this month, we're doing a ball gown and that has been a, a request on my channel for quite some time. So you ask and you shall receive eventually. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate you guys more than you know, and I'll see you guys in my next one.